here lies a Game Boy DMG, as well as a Game Boy Color that has succumbed to the dreaded battery leak. Both consoles not functioning and are deemed destined for an early retirement. But if we combine the CPU or brains of the Game Boy Color with the extremities of the DMG and interface them together using these custom boards from Mouse Byte Labs, we can give new life to these once dead consoles and create a new, better Game Boy. A Frankenstein, if you will. So, let's have a look, shall we? Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to a very special Halloween episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'm excited to share with you a really cool project that allows you to have Game Boy Color functionality inside of a DMG form factor by salvaging components from each of those consoles, such as the CPU and RAM from the Game Boy Color and the power switch and link port connector from the DMG, just to name a few but we'll also be bringing new modern components into the mix, like these amazing custom boards to seamlessly bring everything together. Essentially, we're taking parts from the Game Boy Color and a DMG, mixing in some new components to build a Frankenstein DMG that's ultra capable with a ton of really cool added features, like these integrated, completely customizable LEDs and so much more. And the awesome thing is we're bringing new life to previously dead consoles and this build is powered by authentic Nintendo hardware, namely the CPU and RAM ensuring full compatibility with all Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Now this project is the creation of Nick, who goes by the name of Bucket Mouse. He's a very talented electrical engineer based out of Ohio and actually got a start in developing retro gaming projects by recreating and improving SNES cartridge boards. He also went on to create boards for the NES and Sega Genesis before he started this project, the Game Boy DMG Color. Now I left links down below to where you can find Nick, as well as his extensive GitHub page on his projects, as well as his Etsy store where he sells his custom boards. So definitely check him out. All right, so in this video, I'll show you everything you need to build your very own Game Boy DMG Color. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, go over all of its really awesome set of features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So you're gonna need a lot of parts and a lot of patience for this build. First thing you'll need is of course a donor DMG and Game Boy Color motherboards, since we'll be salvaging about 10 components in total from both, which I'll go over during the tutorial portion of this video. Now I recommend using broken consoles if possible. For example, this DMG has a bad CPU and this Game Boy Color has severe corrosion on the lower half of the board due to a leaking battery. Now you could use two fully working consoles, but it's just so much more satisfying being able to take two broken consoles to make a single working one. Now of course next you'll need these custom boards designed by Nick, which can be found on his Etsy page. Or you could even download the Gerber files from his GitHub and fabricate your own since Nick did make this project completely open source, which is just really awesome. These boards include the motherboard, which holds components like the CPU and RAM chip, the front LCD board, which interfaces with the IPS kit and has the button controls, and it even has these LEDs built in, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Here we also have the updated power board, and lastly, the small audio board. Now please note, you will have to completely populate these boards yourself. While the ones I showed here did have components on them already, they will not come like this when purchased. 
Nick made a very comprehensive bill of material Excel file and even has a pre-made shopping cart on Mauser with all the parts already added, making it super convenient to purchase exactly what you need. For the screen, you'll need to purchase a very particular IPS kit which has OSD functionality, as well as his 3D printed aligning bracket which can be found on his GitHub page. And lastly, you'll need a DMG shell, screen lens, and some buttons. Nick recommends getting an IPS ready shell and screen lens so you don't have to worry about doing any shell trimming. Also, it helps to get translucent parts so you can really see all the RGB goodness this kit has to offer. I'll have links to all the parts I used down below in the video description. And be sure to use the coupon code TITO at checkout when buying parts from Retro Game Repair Shop so you can save 10% on your purchase. Okay, so with everything in hand, let's go ahead and put together this Frankenstein Game Boy. All right, so the first thing we need to do is salvage a few parts from our donor consoles. Starting with the Game Boy Color, I'll be using some Kapton tape to isolate the components I need, since I'll be using a hot air station to extract the parts. First, I'll apply a bit of flux to the legs, then hit it with the hot air. Be sure to go in a circular motion, not keeping the hot air in any one particular spot for an extended period of time. With some tweezers, I am barely applying an upward force while the hot air does its thing until I'm able to lift out the CPU. Nice. Now let's do the same with the RAM chip, as well as the crystal oscillator. Okay, so that's everything we need to remove with hot air from the Game Boy Color, but we need one more component, the EM10 choke filter. I used some chip quick low melt solder to remove it. Now let's move on to the parts I need from our donor DMG console. Here we need to remove quite a few components, but thankfully they're all mostly through hole. So in order to remove these components, I'll be using my desoldering gun. Now unfortunately, that isn't enough for some of these components since the tip of my desoldering gun isn't quite large enough for some of these components. So I use some more chip quick in those areas to remove those particular components, such as the power switch and the link port connector. Now do keep in mind, we also need to remove all the components from our audio board since we'll be swapping them over to our new one. So here's everything that I salvaged. These are from the Game Boy Color. These are from the DMG audio board. And these are from the DMG motherboard. Okay, now let's populate our brand new boards from Bucket Mouse. I'm gonna start by installing the Game Boy Color CPU. To do this, we must first align the pins to the pads. Take your time when doing this as it is crucial they are aligned perfectly. Then add some flux and tack in a few pins to hold everything in place. Once the CPU is tacked in, start to solder all the other pins. The technique I like to use is putting a very small amount of solder onto the tip of my iron and applying it to the pins using a gentle sweeping motion as shown. This takes some time and requires a bit of patience, but I find that I get pretty good results with this method. Also, remember to use Flux. It is most definitely your friend and ensures that you get good, clean, and solid joints. And this is what it should look like when you're all done. Then apply the same technique when installing the RAM chip. Here I'm doing a bit of drag soldering, but this is a slightly more advanced technique and is not necessary to install the chip. And here's the RAM chip all soldered in. Now last, we want to install the crystal oscillator. This is a bit simpler, just tack in one leg and then solder in the remaining three. Okay, great, the most difficult soldering is now behind us. Next, let's solder in the EM10 choke filter. And that's the last of our Game Boy Color components that we need to solder in. Now, like I said earlier in the video, these boards will come completely unpopulated, meaning you'll need to solder in every single component yourself. And that even includes all of these tiny passive components. Again, Nick made it very easy to purchase these parts, but installing them will require a lot of patience. Here you can see me soldering in a few of these components. Next, I'll be soldering in the parts from our donor DMG. Here you can see me installing the power jack. 
And here I'm installing the link port. Here I'm soldering in the volume wheel. And here's the DMG card slot going in. Also, don't forget to solder in the battery terminals. These are brand new ones that I purchased from Retro Game Repair Shop. And here is our fully assembled motherboard. Now here I'm building the audio board. Essentially, I'm just moving over all the components from our old one to this new one. Pretty straightforward. And here it is all assembled. So here you can see that I'm reusing the power cable from the DMG to connect the power board to the motherboard, but you don't need to. You can simply use five strands of wire. One thing to note is that if you are planning to reuse the original cable, you'll need to use an extra wire since Nick's board requires five total wires to make all the necessary connections. Here you can see me soldering in that extra wire. And here's the result. Now to connect the audio board to the motherboard, I'm again going to be reusing the original cable. Again, you can simply use four individual strands of wire. All right, here's everything all wired up, looking good. Next, we're gonna assemble the rear half of the console. Let's first start by cutting a notch in the power switch cover so that it doesn't get in the way of the Game Boy Color game cartridge when turning on the system. Then, go ahead and drop the motherboard into the rear shell. Now, before moving forward, let's hook up the screen just to make sure everything is working correctly. Fantastic! It looks like everything is working as it should, and our soldering was successful. Grab the IPS kit and desolder the two touch sensors from the driver board. Then solder wires to each of the pads as shown. This will allow us to seamlessly control the IPS kit, which I'll demonstrate in just a bit. Next, fish the wires through the aligning bracket, and then mount the IPS panel as shown. Then drop the IPS assembly into the front shell as shown, and place the protective film back on so that we don't accidentally leave any fingerprints on the screen. Next, drop in the buttons and membranes. And before installing the front PCB, we need to install the speaker. I'm using a new funny playing one that I got from Retro Game Repair Shop, but you can reuse the original one too from the DMG. Awesome! Now go ahead and drop the front PCB into the shell. Now go ahead and solder in the IPS control wires to the corresponding pads on the front PCB. And here's how it looks. Don't forget to solder this wire here on the other side, which will allow us to change the color palettes. Awesome, now connect the two halves together using the ribbon cable. And then, button up the console. Drop in some batteries. And your favorite game. And when you turn the console on, you will notice that the image is way off center. But no worries, just get into the IPS OSD menu and adjust things accordingly. And that's it. We have successfully made a DMG color from two dead consoles. Amazing. Okay, that was a pretty involved build, but thankfully everything is functioning, and I have to say, the results are spooktacular. Sorry guys, had to do it. Anyway, with the build complete, let's take a closer look at all the features this thing has to offer. First up, let's talk about the multifunction rocker controller here on the side where the contrast dial used to be. It does a lot of stuff, but let's start with how it interacts with the IPS kit. By rocking the switch up, you can advance through all the brightness levels for the IPS kit, of which there are 10. By rocking the switch down, you can toggle through all the various color palettes. If you flip the switch up and hold, this will enable the on-screen battery level indicator, shown in the top right hand corner. Now switching the rocker down and holding will allow you to toggle through the four different retro pixel modes. My favorite one is the dot matrix display. 
So in addition to controlling the IPS screen settings, the rocker switch also allows you to adjust the integrated LEDs. Pushing the switch in allows you to toggle through all the colors as well as turn the LEDs off. There are eight colors in total to choose from. And pushing and holding the switch in while also pressing left or right on the D-pad will allow you to adjust the brightness of the LEDs. It's just really cool how Nick integrated all these functions. Now, I'm not sure if you all noticed this, but when you turn the console on, the LEDs perform a special animation sequence where the colors match the Game Boy Color logo animation. This is a small thing, but it honestly makes a huge difference. This is just a really neat detail, and I absolutely love it. Of course, since we're using the OSD IPS kit, Nick integrated those controls as well. To bring up the on-screen display menu, simply press select A and B at the same time. To navigate the menu, press B to scroll down, and press A to scroll up. To select an item, press select and A at the same time. And again, press A or B to increase or decrease the values for the various menu options. Then to exit, press select and B at the same time. Again, just awesome that he was able to integrate these controls into the console so seamlessly. Now, something else we're talking about is battery life. Nick conducted a bit of analysis and found that one can expect anywhere between 15 and 24 hours of battery life, depending on the brightness level of the screen and LEDs, while using on -a loop nickel metal hydride batteries. For me, I think that is ample battery life for this caliber of a Game Boy build. And then on the audio front, thanks to the more modern design of the power supply, the sound has less buzzing, is slightly bassier, and a bit louder. All very welcome upgrades. All right, so now that we went over all the features, Let's discuss the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say that I love the idea of taking damaged or dead consoles and being able to put their working parts to good use. Being able to give some of these consoles a second life is pretty awesome, especially when it's a really cool mashup like this DMG color, which brings out the best of both consoles, the classic looks of the DMG and the power and versatility of the Game Boy Color CPU. It's just an overall very well thought out design with extremely well integrated features. Also, battery life is pretty good given all the modern amenities integrated into the project. I mean, if you're a fan of the DMG form factor and design, but you want the expanded game library of the Game Boy Color, then this is certainly the mod for you. And lastly, and quite possibly the biggest pro, is that Nick made this an open source project, meaning that anyone can make one of their own, and other folks in the community can make tweaks and even add new features to this design. So really, there's a lot to like about this project. But let's get into the cons. And honestly, there aren't many. I think you already know what they are, with the biggest one being, of course, difficulty. I mean, this is a tough mod. It requires you to be fairly proficient in soldering, and it helps to have some specialized equipment like a hot air station, although not completely necessary. So I would definitely not recommend this project if you're just getting into modding. And really, the only other con is price. This is not a cheap project. Best case, let's say you already have a broken DMG and Game Boy Color console, and that you plan on reusing the DMG shell and not buying a new aftermarket one. You still need to purchase the IPS kit, all the passive components, and the custom boards, which altogether will cost at a minimum around $150, give or take. So there is certainly some investment that needs to be made if you want to do this project yourself, but I have to say, the results most certainly speak for themselves. Now, if mods like this for handheld consoles pique your interest, then I know you're gonna love this video right here. So definitely check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a happy and safe Halloween, and I'll see you all next Thursday.